So, I've got all this sock yarn and something to tell you, I never plan to make socks. <laughs> So the theme for this video is you don't have to knit socks if you knit and you can knit other things with sock yarn. Just because you don't want to knit socks or you can't knit socks doesn't mean you're not allowed to use sock yarn. I've been knitting for about six years and it's been the past year where I've become obsessed with the fact that I have to make socks because I knit. And it's literally only the past couple of days where I'm like, no you don't know me, you can make other things and never make socks and that's okay. <laughs> but it's weird. I, I do feel like I have to knit socks because I knit. I feel like most knitters feel that way. It's like an invisible pressure that's on us constantly, especially when you go on Instagram. It's pretty yarns and pretty socks just everywhere. It can be and it is hard to not compare yourself to other knitters who knit impeccable socks with like Fair Isle and Tagia and The Beautiful and you're like, oh. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you and kind of myself that you don't have to knit socks, you can knit other beautiful things. So my knitting friend back in Glasgow only knits baby clothes and blankets. And when I said, oh, I've just learnt the magic loop, she was like, oh, what's that? I really, really respect that. And it made me think, I need to just knit what makes me happy like she does. I also need to stop thinking, learn another skill, learn another skill. My brain is constantly telling me to learn another knitting skill, but I don't have to. I can just knit with the skills I have because I've always thought knitting is like a learning process. You learn to knit and then you learn another stitch and then you learn the round and then you learn intarsia and then you, you learn all these things in knitting but you don't have to learn all these things which I've only just realised the past couple of days after six years of knitting. Knitting is quite the journey. Emotional, financial, yes it's, not, it's quite a journey <laughs> but the end is happy because you've got a thing you've made. And I was feeling this pressure of having to learn a new knitting skill like every single day and like that is not healthy and I can't believe it's taken me this long to realise that I don't have to learn new knitting skills. And if you're a new beginner to knitting, don't feel that way either. Like you can just knit garter, like you can just knit the most basic thing and it doesn't matter because it's made you happy and that is like the whole point of knitting, it makes you happy. You shouldn't feel pressure and you shouldn't compare yourself to others. I know that's quite easy to say um, and hard to do but I'm really trying, the past couple of days, <laughs> I'm really trying not to be like that. So why can sock yarns be used for more than just socks? So sock yarn can be put in the washing machine loads. Just think of how many times you wash your socks. That's basically how much you can wash sock yarn. It's light and airy and it can be used to make things, larger items that would usually feel really heavy and weighed down and that wouldn't go in your suitcase or your backpack or whatever. Like this chunky crochet cardigan here, that is like 300 grams of chunky yarn. I can only wear that in the house because if I get too hot, I can't take it off and put it anywhere. I've got to carry this big thing on me. I can't put it in the suitcase really because it will take up like half the suitcase. <laughs> Whereas knitting with sock yarn, it's just, it will just be like this neat little thing and it's really, really, really light and doesn't take up a lot of space. And on this note about it being nice and easy to carry, sock yarn is a perfect project to just carry around. It's just so light and it's so small. The needles for it are small, the project's small, the ball small. And yes, I do know this because I put it in my nice little handbag on a night out, just in case. <laughs> so it's light and airy, but it's surprisingly warm. When you think about hand-knitted socks, they're so warm. So it's really perfect for like knitted garments and hats and things like that. It's really, really surprisingly warm. And also because of the, the nylon in it, it's quite stretchy. So when you come to knit garments, they're not gonna be too tight on you. They're gonna be comfy garments because they've got a bit of stretch to them. So the characteristics of sock yarn when you come to buy it yourself. So sock yarn's also sold under the name of four ply. So when you come to buy sock yarn and it says four ply and not sock yarn, it's still sock yarn. So don't let that confuse you. Four ply, sock yarn are the same thing. And most sock yarn is a blend of 75% wool and 25% nylon. So because it contains that much wool, even the cheapest ever sock yarn is quality. So when you do come to choose a sock yarn, use sock yarn that is super wash because if you knit with wool or anything that isn't super wash, you're gonna have to wash that thing by hand and no thanks. <laughs> And because it's 2023, most yarns now that are sock yarn do contain superwash. Another great thing about sock yarn is many of them are self-striped yarn. So no matter what size thing you knit, it's going to be a really neat set of rows that are all different colours. 
And if you didn't buy a silk stripe and yarn and you were planning to do a striped thing using sock yarn, it would use way more than one ball because some sock yarns contain like five different colours and that's all in one ball of yarn. So it's much better value to buy the silk stripe and yarn rather than buy four or five different balls of yarn. So I'm going to talk about sock yarns now. I've done affordable sock yarns and I've done fancy sock yarns, indie dyers, in case you want to treat yourself. I'll start with the affordable ones first. So West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply. The majority of those are self striped They have Christmas themes so Christmas colours. They have bird themes, so they have blue tits, robin, pheasant, bullfinch, pigeon, owl and mallard. And this is their robin one. Can you see how much it looks like a robin? And this West Yorkshire Spinners contains 35% blue face Leicester. That's not cheese. <laughs> like when I first heard that I was like, what? <laughs> because it sounds like it should be a cheese, blue face Leicester, but no, it's a sheep. <laughs> And the blue-faced Leicester sheep is a specific sheep that is bred for sock yarns. It contains that and you get 64 colour options and it's around £8.49 and it comes in a 100 gram ball so you kind of sorted. The next one is Signet Yarns Truly Wool Rich 4-ply which has 24 colour options. So that's 50 grams per ball but it is only £2.85-ish for a ball which is kind of alright still. The next one is it looks quite normal doesn't it you're thinking oh maybe it's self-striping this is fair isle yarn this was 7.99 a ball and my mum bought me it because i didn't believe her so it knits fair isle it's like magic yarn so that is what it looked that sock there is what this yarn makes like how amazing is that yeah i saw this at the knit and stitching show and i didn't believe my mum so she was like i'll buy you it and you can use it and that was like two years ago <laughs> i actually think i've been trying to make socks for more than a year so this is £8 a ball, 7 99 but I really think it's worth it because it knits fair aisle. If you were to knit a fair aisle sock, you would need like 10 different balls of yarn. And it just comes in one ball and it knits fair aisle. And there's other colours as well. It's really, really good. Oops. So in this video, I've tried to list things that I've only used because I do feel like it's a much better... I can't just come in here and advise you about all this random stuff that I've never used or heard of. So I thought it's better to, for me to say, I've used this, it's good, blah, blah, blah. But I have found the past couple of days this brilliant sock yarn. It's quite a mouthful. Fibre spates, coop knits, socks, yeah! <laughs> this yarn comes in a skein, so you're thinking, oh my God, it's going to be like £20. It's about £6.99. So for the price of £6.99, you're getting the benefit of a skein that would usually cost £20. It is mass produced, which I think is why it's so cheap. It does come in 50 grams, but I do feel like that's still quality. So the colours for this are amazing. They've got the, the colours that most mass produced sock yarns do, like the neutrals and the browns and the reds and stuff. And then they've got neon, which you never ever see in mass produced yarn that cheap. And the colours that aren't neon have a lovely warmth to them. I keep seeing patterns that people have used neon yarn with and it just works. When you look at neon yarn by itself, you're like, oh. But then when you see it in a pattern, it, it just really works. And I really, really want to buy some of this and make something neon just because why not? And they have 35 colour options. The next one is, this is quite a theme in yarn. So obviously you can get the fair aisle and you can get yarn when you knit it, it makes pictures and things like that. This yarn isn't a picture, but it's inspired by Vincent van Gogh. It's opal, four ply sock yarn, and they have loads of other artists that inspired the yarn colours. Some of the colours don't really work, like the stylish diary night, like I've seen that in real life and it's so vibrant and amazing and bright that the yarn for it is quite dull. So I went for this one, which I really think the colours are chef's kiss. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to go much into this, but I do hate Van Gogh merchandise. They have just monetized him and made it so, so tacky. And don't even get me started on that virtual exhibition. If you've seen it and you're thinking of going, do not go. It is the worst it's just the worst. And like I say, this isn't about that. This is about sock yarn. <laughs> so yeah, I, I hate Van Gogh merchandise, but I couldn't resist this sock yarn. And because it matches that painting perfectly, I just couldn't resist. Plus, fun fact, did you know that Van Gogh actually used yarn for his colour theory? So it just kind of, it just ties together. This should be the only thing that exists that is merchandise for him because he used yarn and yarn so it should be the only thing but blah 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 <laughs> but yeah he used he used yarn for his color theory which is i just love that 
So in the Van Gogh Museum, they have this little red box full of the yarn that he actually used. Some of the balls are a single colour, a golden yellow or an intense blue green, while others combine two or three colours of twisted yarn, such as dark violet and bright yellow, a yellow orange and light green. It is known for certain that the balls of yarn belong to Vincent van Gogh, because his close friend, the artist Emile Bernard, mentioned them in an article on Van Gogh, written shortly after he died. I just love that. <laughs> and I'm going to Amsterdam in April, so I will see that in real life, and yes. So I, I, that's why I bought the yarn, because I just thought, if I'm going to Amsterdam to his museum to see his work, like it would just be so fitting to have something made from sock yarn to wear. So now we're onto the hand-dyed indie sock yarns. I wanted to include some of these because you might want to treat yourself. So the thing about indie dye sock yarn, there's so many out there. You go to craft fairs, you go to the inner stitching show, you go anywhere, there's so many stalls full of hand dyed yarns there's so many websites there's so many yarns that are hand dyed indie dyers so for this section i have only chosen ones that i use because i could just list and list and list and list and that's boring generally speaking though the thing about expensive yarn is this is expensive it starts from 20 pounds the thing is it's expensive which means whatever one you go for it's going to be quality it's going to be soft it's going to have the correct fiber content it's going to be lovely no matter what you go because it's that's just those are the rules <laughs> sock yarn for me is kind of like because they all contain even the cheapest one contained 75 percent wool so in my head it's sock yarns are kind of like the helmets of yarn helmets have to have like a certain level of safety and if they don't have that level of safety they're not allowed they're illegal so they start here and then they can go up and up in terms of safety but the cheapest helmet is the safest helmet so that's kind of in my head that's what i think of when i think of sock yarn the cheapest yarn is still really really good quality weird analogy but it works for me so the first one is cd mcwheelie i was going to wear this for the video but i'm in my conservatory and the sun is just beaming on me so i'm lovely and warm anyway so this was a skein inspired by Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and this is a pattern I designed which is keep calm and comma on shawl yes I need to weave the ends in still <laughs> so this is the shawl I'm thinking of doing the Van Gogh yarn in like a just a light nice small shawl so I bought this yarn back when I lived in Scotland and it's just gorgeous and I went to a few of her knitting natters and her shop is gorgeous she, but she has an online shop as well where you can get stuff. So next is Hedgehog Fibres. I bought this at a craft show in Glasgow. It's not my usual colour but it just appealed to me. When, it's, when it was in the skein it was gorgeous and then when I unwound it it just got gorgeouser. <laughs> And that's not a word it got more gorgeous it was it was just lovely and the thing with like sock yarn that's variegated it's like every single stitch on your needle is a different color it's so much fun to knit with and this now is is my color i love this kind of yarn and i think if i never bought this i wouldn't have liked this kind of yarn this is a pattern that doesn't call for sock yarn but it just works this the pattern is sophie scarf by petite knit and i've done it in sock yarn dk and chunky and it worked in every single one so hedgehog fibers their colors are like insane i want them all they're just like it only took 30 grams of sock yarn i've got all this left so you're spending lots of money but then if you knit something small you can have like two or three patterns out of the one ball there's just there's too many colors to count they're just amazing Look how pretty. So Hedgehog Fibres, they have loads of free patterns. So you spend quite a bit of money on the yarn, but then you've got free patterns. So it kind of balances out a little bit. So the next one is F Harbour Yarn, which I've yet to knit with, but I was just so enticed by the theme. So the, the, the theme was Votes for Women and I just love it. It came and I've wound them on the little balls and they're really soft and I can't wait to knit something with them. Like, I have all this sock yarn, and like I said, I've been putting it off for like two years because I've been wanting to knit socks. But now I've sat down and thought about it and made this video, I think I'm going to actually be able to use my sock yarn, which is nice. <laughs> it's, a, it's a yarn that constantly stares at me, like, use me. But I can't because I can't knit socks. But now, after this video, I'll be sorted, I'll have loads of patterns, I'll be able to use my sock yarn. It's going to be brilliant.
and lastly is My Yarn Place UK and Vicky Brown Designs. I've only ever used DK Yarn for both of these people. So for My Yarn Place UK, I made this cat cravat out of DK. It's the softest DK I've used in my life. <laughs> It's lovely. And then I got the Vicky Brown advent calendar and I was like, is this the softest DK I've used in my life? <laughs> so they're on my radar as, because I use their DK, I'm like, they must have lovely sock yarn because if the DK is soft, imagine the softness of the sock yarn because sock yarn is soft anyway. So onto patterns. The thing about having a knitting channel is I want to show you all the things, but I can't knit them in time. So I end up showing you just patterns but in my old videos i would just list patterns and never make them but in this video i've listed things that are unique and that i am going to make i'm currently knitting one of them and i plan to make all of them yes i do <laughs> in this video i'm trying to the yarn i've used the patterns i'm going to use and i'm using i just feel like it's a much better experience for you if i come on and talk about things that i know are good and there's also because I picked the unique ones, it's not a list of everything, it's unique ones. There is a lot of shawls out there and there is a lot of jumpers, so I haven't included them. And if you do want to knit a shawl or a jumper, you can go on any knitting website and they'll have tons of patterns for you, which I didn't want to do that because I just thought, let's keep it interesting. The point of this video is to show you things you didn't think you could make before watching the video. So yeah, there's some interesting things. So. The first section is three patterns that use one ball of yarn. So the first one is my Keep Calm and Comma on shawl, which is garter stitch with a KFB on each side. And for my Van Gogh, I'm actually going to use stockinette. I feel like that would be a much better way to show the yarn off. This is a great pattern because it's got KFB on the end, which makes a lovely border. And because of the border, I can do stockinette stitch and it won't curl. It's quite hard to see on camera, the border but trust me, it's there. <laughs> it's such a simple pattern, but because of the border, it doesn't look like a simple pattern. The next one is tiny tassels, and this is just so cute. I love the little tiny tassels on it. <laughs> I've just realized why it's called tiny tassels. Perfect. <laughs> the next one is sock head slouch hat. This is the one that every knitter has heard of, probably, actually. I only heard of it in January. Anyway, it has 23,608 finished projects on Ravelry. And I think that is like the, the, I don't even know. It's probably like a world record for Ravelry. That is insane. It's quite nice just to sit and scroll through all the different colors of sock yarn as well. I quite like that. And the next is this book sleeve. I just think this is so cute. It says it's for like bullet journal, um, but I do feel like it could make it fit an actual book because it is stretchy sock yarn i think this will be perfect for my reading journal it's not the this lady in the pattern mentions the official bullet journal which i can't remember the name of i got a general notebook because i do not have the time to do a bullet journal mine's just i read this book i thought this of it and that's it <laughs> so i think if i prettied it up with a book cover that would be the perfect little way to make it look nicer this book thing would be perfect in the fair aisle because it's so flat. It, you'll be able to see every little detail. I think it would be lovely. The next is this sock yarn mug cozy, which is just a nice little project. If you're still going to what to do, you can knit this little mug cozy and it will get your knitting mojo back. And it's just a nice little project when you don't know what to knit as well. Because when you don't know what to knit, you don't want to knit a big thing. You will want to start with something little and then kind of get your ideas back. I'm just going to say ray of sunshine. I don't know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> it's the stripe in the middle of this jumper. I feel like if this was knit with the one colour, but the stripe in the middle was just neon and did not match the main colour, the ridiculousness of that would really work just with a bright pink neon or yellow just in the middle there. I think that would really work. All her patterns are free, which is amazing. The next is Baby Bright Pants by Lion Brand Yarn. Lion. So I don't usually include baby stuff because I feel like that's just, where do you start? I'm never going to knit baby things. There's too many out there to explain. I just, I just don't, okay? <laughs> but when I was browsing for sock yarn patterns, I saw these and I just thought like, they're so cute and they're so funky and I just couldn't resist just showing you them. <laughs> Plus when I was a baby, like I've got a brother and sister, I'm a middle child. So my mum knit black like tracksuit leggings for my brother and then I got them and then my sister got them. So it's kind of like, you know, full circle in terms of baby 
legs. So the next section is scrap yarn knitting patterns. I'm going to start with this sock yarn square because I keep seeing these on Twitter and I'm just, I'm obsessed with them. I, I haven't made one yet, I just keep looking at them. I love that they're 3D, it just looks amazing. So this pattern is for like one square and you can turn that square into anything. The, the possibilities with, it, with a square are just endless. You could make blanket, cardigan, scarf, jumper, loads of things. <laughs> I can't think off the top of my head, but you can make loads of things with squares. This next one, I know it's not Christmas, but I've included it because it's so cute. It's a sock yarn ornament and they're like, they're just so small and cute. So in winter, you knit things for summer and then in summer, you knit things for winter. So it, it, it's meant to, when you come to the season, you're meant to have all these things, but we, we all know it doesn't work that way. We're like, oh, it's summer in a month. I'll start knitting my entire summer wardrobe. And the same with Christmas, November. Better start knitting Christmas. It's <laughs> so it never works out that way. So next up is these thigh high socks by Lion. I can't say that word. Why am I saying it's so weird? <sighs> Brand yarns. So these are socks, but there's no heel on them. And it's just a knit, giant knitted tube. Probably because everyone knows how hard the heel is. So it doesn't include it. <laughs> so the official photographs for this aren't scrappy. They're obviously used like the same yarn for both socks. But I do feel like it's a perfect scrappy project. And when you go on what other people have made, it's just, they've, they've made scrappy ones. They've made Fair Isle, actually made Fair Isle. So they've done it themselves, it's amazing. So I feel like it's a perfect scrappy project. Next is this scrap yarn bag cowl, which I'm actually knitting. And it's just lovely. I love the 3D look of this. It's just four rows knit, four rows purl, and repeat that until you get like the, the right length width. So now we're onto paid patterns. I'm going to start with this ripple bralette. This has been on my list for a while. I was feeling a little overwhelmed, but I was looking through what people have made and in the notes, people have said it's a brilliant pattern. It's really well explained. So because of it's a really well explained pattern, I'm no longer overwhelmed to knit it. And it's like the perfect summer knit. And I've got plenty of time because I honestly thought it was spring and then it started snowing and I was wearing jumpers again. So it's like, okay, I've got plenty of time to knit this for summer. The next is sock arms. I just love this. It's like, it's so serious here. And then it's just like, woo, fun. There's just something about the way clothes look using sock yarn as well. I think it's the fineness of the yarn. It's such a simple thing. You can knit a basic sweater in sock yarn, but then because it's so it's such small stitches, it has a big impact, which I love. Next is Mystic Square by James N. Watts. I just love the scrappy look of this. It's just, I just like it. Next is this mini yarn cozy by Nitty Natty and I keep seeing that and I was like, I don't get it. And then I saw it again. And I was like, I get it. <laughs> so it's just, if you had like a nice white, you could use, you put it inside your little cozy and it keeps it nice and clean and it looks cute. Because at first I was like, yarn inside of yarn? What? <laughs> but now I think it's cute and practical. Okay, so these are quite a challenge for me, but I need to make them. <laughs> these are called the basic shorts and I just think they would be amazing, like in summer and then in winter with the tights. They're a bit on the pricey side, but pockets, <laughs> that's just all you need really. The last one, I was on Ravelry a long time at this point and I'd gone through a lot, a lot of patterns. And then I landed on this. <laughs> it's just brilliant. Socks appeal boxes, like the photograph, the name of them. It's just, I just love it. It's so silly. I'll probably never make them, but I just found this so stupid and silly. And it's kind of like when you see ridiculous things. So you see like people crochet on the cracker. I see like knitted pants and it's just like, you would never make them. But I do like the way she's wearing them with a belt on. I kind of probably will make these. <laughs> and then I've seen them on the Ravelry where, where people have made them, but they've not put the buttonholes in and I've just knit the, I don't even know, the cover. I don't know what you call that part of the boxer. <laughs> but I just knit that part and it, it does really kind of work. Imagine that in neon, plain grey boxers and then like the cover in like bright yellow neon. <laughs> and then you wear it as if it's clothing. It would just be hilarious. I actually think I'm going to make them. 
So, like I said, there's like lots of shawls and jumpers. So I've compiled a list, not patterns, but lists of projects that work with sock yarn. So the point of this list is you can go onto Ravelry or allfreeknitting.com or any knitting website and search for these. These are the ones where there's so many patterns so you don't know what to choose. Shawls, blankets, you could do scrappy crochet granny stitch, you could do granny squares knitted scrappy blanket or you could just buy sock yarn that matches not every project has to be scrappy leg warmers scarves gloves cushion covers draft excluders just knit a giant tube and if you can't knit in the barn you knit it flat and then sew it up later headbands boot toppers the benefit of boot toppers is you've got the benefit of having socks popping out of your boots without the effort of the heel and all that jazz and any steve mesh shawl like his shawls are just designed for sock yarn I've never made one, but I do have yarn to make one and I'm going to start with painting triangles and I'm going to do it in these colours. So I bought the blue from the Knitting Stitching Show last year and then my mum gave me these two red ones. I just think red and navy go so well together. And if you're like me and you look at Stephen Mess patterns and think, that's mental. <laughs> Which I've been thinking for like the past two years. But... He's got a YouTube channel where he talks through his patterns and he's a very, very good teacher. He goes slow and he talks through his pattern and he explains it in both continental knitting and throw over knitting. I even went on Reddit and was like, what is Stevens West easiest shawl? And I got this answer. So I've bought the yarn and I'm actually going to do it, which I'm really excited about. So lastly, just for a bit of fun, wind down, <laughs> I thought I'd share with you my sock yarn stash. I feel like it's a lot of stock yarn because I haven't used it, but I think when I do sit down and start working my way through these patterns, I'm gonna realize I don't have that much. <laughs> probably not, I've probably got too much. <laughs> some of them have the bands on and some don't. I attempted to knit socks with this and then I pulled the socks out. You can see here where I've wound it back into the ball, but this, I can't remember. <laughs> I do think it's Stignet, but don't quote me on that. And then this was from Hobby, I think it was Hobby's own, and I bought it because I like the Halloween colours, and guess what time of year I bought it? Like, October the 10th. <laughs> it's like what I was saying about winter and summer, how you never actually knit properly in the right season. I have this yellow, and I don't know why it's so small, because I don't have anything yellow finished, and probably must have got frustrated, tried to knit socks and just threw them in the bin. And that, I do know that one is Signet. And like I say, I have my two Stephen West ones, which are just gorgeous. The reason I picked these and navy is because you look at this and you think red, but if you look closer, there's navy in it. And I think the navy will make this colour just pop. That is just lovely. And obviously I've got my fair isle, my robin. This looks like I've never used it, but I pulled it out and then put that back on like a nerd. <laughs> this was from Sue McWheelie, but I don't think it was her who made it. She had it in her shop and I bought that Halloween time again. Never made anything with it. I tried knitting a scarf and then I couldn't figure out how to keep doing the chevron pattern. I kept forgetting it. So I pulled it out and started again and then started again. And then now it's this. <laughs> and then this is sock yarn that came with my Sincere Louise Knitted Ghost. So it's a ghost knitting a ghost. I didn't finish that on Halloween, but I knit it the next year and I had finished on Halloween, so it's perfect. Then I've got these Fables, Drops Fable, and these are lovely, rich, warm colors. I think these would look really nice with the squares. If I did this and then this, so this gray is Signet, and I think if I, if I did a mixture of those for my squares would look lovely. Then lastly, I have this King Cole. Oh, that's not even sock yarn, it's just in the sock yarn bowl. <laughs> you go there. Oh, I'm, I am organized, kind of. <laughs> I have this footsie, which I bought in the knitting show last year, and I was planning to do a Sophie scarf with it. And that's it. Like I say, I'm knitting my cowl thing, and then once my Van Gogh yarn comes I'm going to knit the shawl yeah I'm really excited I was researching for this video and writing everything out and I was like hmm. <laughs> and then I started talking about it I'm really excited to start actually using my sock yarn just remember sock yarn is for more than just socks you can knit anything you want with it I feel like I'm going to have to keep reminding myself of that because for like two years I've been driving myself mad being like you have to knit socks but it's okay to never ever knit socks which I kind of think I'm gonna do <laughs> there's such a 
a weird thing around knitting around like i've avoided so many patterns over the years because of knitting around people do convert flat to round but people barely ever convert round to flat which i'm just going to start doing like i'm knitting that cowl flat because i've tried to knit in the round both magic loop and by joining the stitch and i just i don't i don't like it <laughs> I don't mind sewing up mattress stitch at the end. I don't mind sewing up work because I knit toys. So I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments below what you want to make or if you have any unique patterns that I haven't mentioned, I would love to hear. And I just want to say, this was filmed Friday and today's Sunday, but I just want to say like, thank you so much for all my new subscribers and all the comments on my last video. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed about how nice everyone is and like how I've gained like 300 subscribers in like four, four or five days. I, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It made me very happy and it made me really excited to make this next video for you. Like I was really excited about my followers, about you, about making a new video for you and, and all the interaction. Like I really feel like my channel is going into, into a nice community, which is lovely. So yeah, thank you very much. And I, I should probably go now because I could just sit and say thank you for like five hours. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.